My mom had passed away in Cuba when I was five. My dad was one of the very fortunate citizens to win a visa lottery to leave Cuba. And uh, we came to the United States uh, to pursue the American dream. That dream of being a pilot, of having flown out of that airplane on October 6, 1997, out of Cuba to Miami, that dream has stayed in my mind ever since. Every school that I went to, I excelled, and I tried to be number one and the best of the best. I leaned towards uh, aerospace and aviation. But in the back of my mind, I, I knew that I wanted to fly the meanest, the baddest, the fastest planes in the world. Uh, I initially wanted to go through the Air Force and um, have a significant impact through service to this country for having allowed us to come here to have opportunities which we would never would have had, not even till this day in Cuba. I decided to go to both Georgia State University and Georgia Tech. I was in the top 5%. For Valentine's Day 2012, only five of us uh, were selected for pilot slots. Oh man, the accident. Um, I don't remember much going home on a motorcycle just like I did every, every day. 700 feet from being in my neighborhood, a lady in a minivan ran the light and I was T-boned um, at 50 miles an hour as I was going through an intersection. That, that uh, put everything on pause. My brain, my lungs, my heart, everything just shut off. I died at the scene for 15 minutes. I uh, fractured my T4, T5 vertebrae, resulting in a spinal cord injury, an injury of the central nervous system of the body, a peripheral nerve injury of the right arm. So here I am, I wake up three months later. It didn't kill my dreams. It didn't kill me. Your body could be paralyzed, and my body was as paralyzed as it could be, but my mind wasn't paralyzed. I did not see myself as someone with a disability. I did not feel disabled. I woke up as that fighter pilot, and I said, okay, let's assess the situation. Let's observe, orient, decide, and act. I did investigations. I got all the 911 phone calls on a CD. I listened to them all. I got the police report. I contacted one by one every witness that saw the accident. I went to every doctor that read every medical report. I went to every Mayo Clinic. I traveled all the U.S., went to conferences, tried to understand the human body, what the central nervous system is, how come humans have not walked again after complete spinal cord injuries in, in this lifetime and in history of the human race. I spoke with the doctor and he told me a very familiar number. You have 1% chance of ever walking again. 1% again and 1% of leaving of Cuba, 1% of becoming a pilot, 1% of walking again. I quickly found out that I only had two doors. One door is uh, be depressed, don't continue my career, don't finish my degree, or I could go with door number two, which was uh, put on my pants and try to figure out a way forward. This Masters of Biomedical Innovation and Development at Georgia Tech uh, was one of a kind. Now I am the Executive Director of uh, Henry Neuro Recovery Center here in Atlanta that is focused on changing the standard of care for spinal cord injury patients. We're going after the long-term solution. We don't want to improve the daily lives of these people. We want to get them out of a wheelchair. I tell everybody, this right here is my laboratory, my body right here. And everything that I implement, the protocols that I create, I implement them on myself first. I've now gained sensation. I'm walking on a locomat, a uh, robotic assisted uh, locomotor machine. Four hours a day, five days a week. That's 20 hours a week of walking. And that translates to uh, uh, 30 miles a week. And that's 100% weight bearing, no assistance from the device, even though I have a harness on just for safety. What I've seen is unbelievable. I wanna focus the next 10 years to get hundreds, if not thousands of people out of wheelchairs. I've almost died six times. One time I was clinically dead. So I have facing obstacles is something I'm not afraid of. I wanna transform people's qualities of lives.